Hello I can and your cursor. Good. And welcome to Inscription Casey's Mod. Let's do this again. Select the starter deck. We can go with the ice cream deck, which is Stuart, Frog, and Wolf. But apparently we've already beat with that, whatever. Go with the blood deck, which is a uh, goat, moose, and mole. Or go with the bug deck, which is ant queen. I think that's mosquito and skunk. So let's go with bug deck. Start it. Okay. We have to have like 40 points of challenges. So all regular battles are placed with totem battles for 20 challenge points. It's been literally months since I've last done this. Uh... Frost battles are also totem battles. That is an insane challenge. So all battles with one damage on your side of the scales, which is actually not that difficult. Uh, you do not start with the fish hook item, which is what I'm used to doing for challenges, but it's like... You know what? Everything is a totem, and we start with one damage on our side. Let's start the run. So, this time I have a guest. I'm not doing Casey's mod by myself. How much do you know of this game? Not a lot. All I know is, what was it something about when you die, you become a card? Yes, that is not a thing in Casey's mod, though. Oh. Uh, but that is a thing in the core game. So we are going to the tracker right here. Show pelts. Fortunately, we did start with two rabbit pelts, so we can take two of these cards. So all... Uh, oh, so, okay, we can look at, say... I clicked the wrong thing. So we can look at, like, the icons of things. We can see that this is a brood parasite. When a card bearing this sigil is played, an egg is created on the opposing space, and it has flying. So this one has uh, stinky, so the card opposite has minus one power. This has airborne. And this one, if we play it, we make an ant. So flying ant. And we could make another ant queen. Magpie is basically when we play it, we get a free tutor. Uh, but double sacrifices for that is... Not the best, but this one right here. Whenever this is dealt damage, we get a B. That's a very useful sigil to have. Now, we can either go to the backpack and get new items, but we're full on items, so that won't really help us. We can go to here or go to the totem. I don't think we start off with a totem. Uh, but if you look at our cards, everything already has sigils. Oh, no, no. Yeah, everything has sigils. So let's go to here. And we can choose a card to sacrifice, such as the beehive, and put it on one of our other cards. So, okay, no, that would just make an egg. That would be kind of pointless. That, so we can say, put it the beehive effect onto the skunk, or put something like the skunk effect onto, let's see, we could do the flying ant, and thus, yes. Put, so we can put something like stinking onto, say, the flying ant, like this. Sacrifice it, make that card stronger. Okay. We can go here, which is a totem battle. So all of their elk have reach. So we can look at the board and we can see that a wild bull with, like, shove and a rabbit are going to be placed there next to him. There's a frozen opossum just sitting right there. We have a scroll in our hand. This is our points. We have one point against us. Whoever gets to plus five wins. These are items. Uh, we can, you know, crack this to get a scroll. We can take one of their cards. Or we can use this to tip the scales in our favor. But I think that one is three points. No, no, that one's just one point. We can use that to tip the scales at one point in our favor. We can play squirrel and then we can get a beehive. So wild bull is going to come down and attack the fur. And then we can totally say put out this. So that doesn't even come out in the first place. Now I wish we could put it there. So we can totally do squirrel and then cuckoo. It has one blood point, so we need one point of sacrifice. Make an egg right there so that doesn't come out in the first place. And we can say go. Attack one point over. Now the scale is tied. They attack the tree for three, then those two swap places. We want to get this. And we can go for... So we could just sacrifice that, but that is going to wind up dying. Then that's going to go over there. So we're going to wind up needing this over here regardless. So we can totally do squirrel there and then replace it with the beehive. And Sego will be fine for now. And then...
Take another squirrel card. Everything is going to work out just fine. That's going to kill that. It's going to give us a B. Then it's going to move over there. And I th think we'll actually be shockingly fine with that happening. Yes. So we don't attack. They attack this. We get a B. Our thing dies. We get a bone for it. Let's take a regular card. We got our flying ant. So everything is good. So our scales are tied. We could totally put out maybe two... We could totally put out four power worth of stuff. Now, the only issue is that the wild bull is going to be a problem, but we can always just fish hook, take that wild bull. Play the squirrel down. And then flying ant it. And then put down a B. Now, if we pass a turn, we deal five damage, and we win. Simple. So now we can, uh, bu -bu -bu. we could do more sigils this way, get more items. Let's go for more sigils. So first we get a card. Pronghorn, Bloodhound, Cuckoo. Let's use that to replace. Porcupine. If it gets, uh, hit, it deals damage back. Turkey Vulture. If we get enough bones, we can, you know, just play it for bone cost. And then we could give that a new thing. We need more stuff that's easy to play. And then we can go to sigils. So we can say, put something on the vulture. But what would we want to put in? We could put in that which would get us an ant. We could put in that which would get us a... Which would get us B if this gets hit. We really want that sigil on something with a lot of toughness, honestly. So we could put this sigil just on the ant. No, let's put that sigil on the ant queen. We could okay. also... We could also actually do it the other way around to put the ant sigil on the beehive. We can play the beehive and get a free ant out of the deal, and that would require only one sacrifice, not two. Beehive is not actually an ant, so it won't buff uh, power of ants, but it, we should be ultimately fine. If we go that way, we can do that again. And also doing this... Uh, lowers our deck size which is ultimately useful so we could do part of a totem which would have been useful to go for but i think going for the extra sigils is what we're going for this one if we because in order to do a totem you need two halves of it you need the base of it which is the type and you need the head of it which is the like the tribe so this gives diving so that elk farm is basically not going to be able to be hit uh, but that's only going to be one to start off with, and we could always... No, if we had that, we could do it. Oh, I have a plan. Cuckoo right there. And then we can pass the turn and attack, and that deer is basically not coming in. That mole is not going to be an issue. We can do this. So let's squirrel and flying ant right here. And then we can pass. They both just... Swing over and everything is fine. That's this. Grab that. And now. Boom. Both those ants pump up ants. And now for overkill damage. We got two uh, points. Two, yeah, two foils, as they are called. So let's see, we can get a beast, a bird, or an elk. We mostly have insects. And, oh, come on. Fine. Insect is my favorite tribe uh, to grab for this, because there are two incredibly broken insect cards. Okay. Uh... Because of their sigils. Unfortunately, we didn't get either of those. So let's just throw flying on. Everything we have already has flying. Uh... I think. I think we have to do that. And throw it onto something. But I don't want to do that. But I think we have to, because we went for bird. 
So we have to throw the Kuko effect onto something, so might as well... Okay, Turkey Vulture, we're basically not going to be able to play because we won't get that many bones. So throw it onto the Raven. Really darn unfortunate. Shouldn't have gone for the bird. Should have realized we had too much flying already. But you know what? So it goes. And they have reach. Okay, cool. Uh, Wild Bull, can't really do anything about that. They are... Little Rabbit, not going to be much of an issue. That has reach. I say put a squirrel there, replace it. Actually, do I want to put it right here instead? No. Place that right there. And say go. Okay. Uh, okay, you know what? Squirrel. Right here. Because it had reach, it wants to pop up and try to block. And then we can squirrel into a beehive. Into a worker ant to pump up this flying ant. And gets a few extra points once again. Okay, go here for a thing. Go there, but we don't need that. Let's go for Trapper and start working on a totem, I suppose. The finest pelts for sale. The first one's free. So, common, uncommon, I mean, rare cards we can get for that. Alright, that's all we can do. Pelts do take up space in your deck. And they don't provide blood. But she moved to offer her carvings. So we don't have anything so far. That just tunnel. That'd be snakes. None of these are useful. So we don't have any snake or elk types. Oh, we could give flying to a pelt. Let's give flying to a pelt, I guess. And get rid of the turkey vulture. I don't know what that will mean when we go to sell the pelt. Oh, yeah. Uh, you get two lives once you go to a boss fight. Oh, also, uh, now we have to fight the... Uh... Man, Grimace shook his head. You shouldn't have come here. We're on our first boss fight, the Trapper. So let's see, if we kill those, they turn into traps. And if we kill the trap, the creature opposing it will die. Which right now means that whatever creature we use to kill the trap is going to die. But then we get a pelt, which will help us for phase two. Uh, both, uh, both. Also, I love this music. So creepy. Okay, we can we can totally raven to clear up that space. So we can smoke and squirrel and raven. I say keep that pelt in hand and just be ready to go. And then so we'll deal two to the face and we'll take two. Take a squirrel card, place it down. Take beehive, play it down as well. And I say leave it at this, honestly. Get the free bees. Uh, do I work an ant for this? So that's gonna do that, that's gonna do that, that's gonna do that. Flying Ant would totally do that, and that would be good for that. Wait a second. Oh, the bees that the beehive gives also will give us ants. That, that is news. Interesting. 
Okay, well that's kind of cool. Alrighty. So all we really have now are, okay, we have the wolf pelt. We can totally throw the wolf pelt down. It still has flying. What had the stink? That had the stink. We can totally toss down, oh look, toss down a bee. And toss a flying ant on it. Yeah, because that would just kill off the bee in one shot. Toss down a flying ant, so now the strange fog won't kill it. And throw down... Oh, no, we don't have another bee, do we? Whatever, we're doing two damage again. Almost enough to kill. And take one and then grab a squirrel. And at this point... Yeah, a lot of ants. At this point, we'll be fine. Kill off that. Give you trap. And now onto phase two of the boss fight. The skinning knife turns. Let's trade. Give us a pelt, but fill the entire board. Hope you brought pelts, because these creatures are prepared to rip your throat out. Trade for what you can, but know this. The rest will stay and fight for me. Okay, so... And then it's a question of, okay, we have, what, three pelts, so we can buy three of these. That porcupine is a non-issue. It does not have reach. We don't have to care about it. That sparrow is not an issue, and then it turns into a river otter, which also won't do anything because it'll be caught behind the porcupine. That elk fun will do nothing because it'll never come out. So these four are the only ones that we actually have to care about, and of them, we don't really have to care so much about, say, the mole. Before otter dealing one to us a turn, so we... Should get rid of this. Actually, that is going to have zero power. It will have death touch, but no power. So we actually don't have to care about that. So we can just buy those three. Very well. And we seriously don't have to care about anything else that might be uh, coming for us. So we can say squirrel and worker ant. And we had another squirrel. Squirrel, worker ant. and a lot of extra points, and boom, that's the first boss defeated. Your lives are restored. And now we can get a rare card, such as the fabled and legendary Ouroboros. Pack Rat, if we play this, we get a free item. Strange Larva, this one will upgrade twice. It turns into a massive beat stick of a creature. Amoeba is ev no, Amoeba has a random uh, ability every time we get it. So Strange Lava, because that turns into, what, an 8-7 or something crazy? So we walk forward to the second map. So this... <laughs> you are now go by the wetlands. Huh? So many times the wood cover had been busy. Okay, this will get rid of one of our cards. I think this... If we do a certain trade... That pumps one of our cards permanently. So let's go to the fire. The Trial of Blood. The three drawn cards must cost at least four blood combined to pass. Or cost at least five bones. We don't have anything that costs bones. Let's go with the Trial of Blood. That costs two. That costs one. Oh, we failed. We don't get anything. Otherwise, we could, like, get a card. But this... We could give one of our cards plus two health, which I want to give to the beehive. Makes sense. Uh, this would be risky. We could try to put, keep th this at the fire and give it another two health, or there's a chance we lose the beehive. Oh, let's push our luck. We lost it. Feeding time, screamed one survivor, leaping upon the beehive. The spears promptly eviscerated the beast. You snuck away amid the sickening sounds, gnashing and howling. The bones are yours. We can break that little piggy and get five bones. We don't have anything oh. that requires bones, though. Oh, gosh, all of your bugs are going to evolve. That is terrifying. Ringworm. Uh, worker ant. Okay. Okay, okay. What do we have? Strange larva. Okay, we have a strange larva. 
we could probably do this with what we have here. Okay, they're going to walk up and attack us for one this turn. That evolved. Let's do this. So that's going to attack us for another one. It didn't evolve yet. So one, two, three. <laughs> What's that a spider crawling on the card? Yes. One, two, three, and that's just... No, four, five. Oh, shoot. We're going to be hit for a solid five. I, I think you're going to lose. How big is this thing? Actually, this... This will stop that from attacking it. Stop one damage from that. So be hit for one, two, three, and hit them for one. We might survive this. Oh, no. They evolve at the end of our turns, but that thing is still... Nope. Okay. But we only lose one of our lives. It's painful to see. Okay, get a card with a certain blood cost, or you just get a random card. Let's go for a certain blood cost and go for our bones. It could cost one, two, or three blood, or it could cost some amount of bones. And a possum. Not a great card. But now we can sigilify something. Let's go for the top and put the strange lava on top. We don't have anything. Oh, we don't have anything else. Okay, so strange lava. Let's put it on, we can either put on the pelt or the opossum, I guess. Wow, we've done too much upgrades. Put on the opossum. It hurts to see this. Because it won't get the, like, double or triple evolve that that has necessarily. Oh, we can repaint a card. That's a thing I apparently unlocked. All of the snakes are going to just move. Not necessarily push, but move. Rattler had three power. That's going to be a lot to uh, want to deal with. Okay, wait. We can throw this right here and we can scroll away to a flying ant to put that up here. Put that back to neutral. Yeah, throw that there. Okay, that one now have zero. That kills that. And these will both start moving. Okay. Da -da. We can deal one and then we can take two. And then next time we can grab another squirrel to get another raven. Which won't necessarily help us too much, all things considered. But at the very least, yeah. Deal one for the sake of taking two. We'll be back to there and then do all of that. Because we can't fight any of these things. Okay. Grab this. And then we can deal three and exchange will take two and then the flying ant will be killed. Oh no! Flying ant won't be killed. It has stink. We can totally wrap it pelt to stop one of these damages. One, two, three would be fine. And then boom. Just enough to win. Let's go this way. Ringworm flying ant. Flying Ant has proven uh, useful. But now we can paint a card. Just say you like the painting. I will make myself useful. What shall I paint? Okay, so I think we're painting over one of our cards, right? I don't know. Let's do this Flying Ant. No, no, right, we're copying a card. We're copying a card. Copy this one. I must all my ability for this one. So, be a copy, but it might be a bit off. With the master be proud. 
So that looks to be the exact same card. We just copied something. Okay. All of the bugs have thorns. Oof. I can hit your ant with my ant. So, squirrel. I'm not sure what to make of this game so far. Oh, yeah, it is definitely a game. I mean, it, yeah, it's definitely a game. But it's just like, for one thing, you're the fact that you're clearly, you've played it enough to know what everything does and everything. It's just going way yes. too fast for me to... Yeah, if you play, like, a new game, then you can, like, you get the cards, like, one at a time, and you start learning things and figuring stuff out and all that. And it's quite the experience seeing it's like because you start with like stow it and it's like oh what does stow it do it's like oh well you see so now i know that's like what pretty much all the different sigils do so i know okay i need to look for this thing need to grab something like this i can toss down a scroll down there as a sacrifice to the skink let that thing die that is a superfluous act I'm actually not doing that well when it comes to my cards, but those flying ants with stink are doing a lot of work. So I know, like, what all these different, like, symbols do. Like, here, new cards. I know that, like, the Mantis, it has bifurcated strikes, so it attacks to the left and right instead of attacking the one right in front of it. And I know that this, against the trap cards, you know, from the trapper fight, if you use the bifurcated strike to hit one of those traps, the mantis lives because the trap only kills what's right in front of it, not what hit it. The warren, you can play this and get a bunny card in your hand. That's actually really good. Uh, that is nice. I'm going to take it and probably wind up tossing the, yep, toss the sigil. Toss the worn sigil onto a flying ant, so if I play the ant, I get a bunny, so I can play another flying ant. Easy. And let's fire and see if how well we can push our luck here. Enhance its power. Oh, gosh. Okay. Raven or the opossum? I feel like... I feel like doing it with the Raven, because if we lose... Because I know that there is a... If we try to push our luck, we could lose the card. Let's do it with the Raven, because if we lose the Raven, we're fine. Okay. And in Casey's mod, I think... Yeah, Casey's mod, you can only do it twice. In the actual main game, you can do it up to four times. But, in the main game, you can also kill the people by throwing in the Ringworm. Keep it cooking until they eat the ringworm, and then the next time you go to a campfire, they won't be around so you can upgrade your creature all four times. Mm. So you can... Yeah. Oh, it also works if you use a creature with death touch. It'll also kill them. Well, an immense man slouched beside a mucky pond. He appeared to be tearing hunks of flesh from a fish corpse. Some chunks were thrown back to the pond where a few ghoulish birds snapped them up, and some were sloppily pushed into the hulking man's mouth. <sighs> Bring fish. Okay, so we have the worn ant, and we have a raven, and we have a regular flying ant. Kingfisher. It has the flying ability, which means it'll hit over our creature and hit us directly, ignoring our creature unless our creature has reach. But it also has a dive, which means during, it's basically the opposite of fly. So when it's our turn, it'll t go under the water and we will attack over it. So that's actually a perfect... So let's do a squirrel. Let's do a flying ant somewhere else. We get a rabbit. Play the rabbit and then we play our flying ant with stink which will reduce its power to zero and that's basically perfect for everything we need and then since that has since these are ants they get power equal to number of ants you control oh no you don't do that 
But now he's angling his hook, he's going to try to take our flying ant. However, we're just going to kill him before he can take the ant. Or at least, you know, kill phase one. Before he can take the ant. Go fish. So now, oh my gosh. He put in some bait buckets facing all of our creatures. If we kill the bait bucket, it summons a shark. Which is like a 6-4. Like, it's insane. However, since we fly over, we aren't going to fear the wrath of the shark at all. So let's just throw down some squirrels. So, depending on if you get a good setup. Because, like, yeah, he just keeps throwing out bait buckets. And we have a lot of flying creatures. We don't have to care about any of the bait. And we can get a whole lot of extra teeth. Easy enough. And another bear card. Ooh, Yuli. Four sacrifice, but it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. More man or amoeba? More man, it has reach and it will jump around and stuff. Amoeba just because it's bones. Every time a creature of yours dies, you get a bone. Let me see. Well, sun rose over the sleepy furs. Birds fled across the path of wolves and elk. You embarking upon the woodlands. So let's do this. So we get a corpse mag. It's one of the two most broken non bear creatures in this game. So you could put it out for the cost of five bones. Mm. Or, if this is in your hand and one of your creatures dies, this gets put into its place. So this will automatically be played if it's in your hand and something else dies. Oh, fun. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to get more food. Oh, wait, what? This is a new one. First time a card bearing the sigil would take damage to prevent that damage. That's cute. I'm going to grab the corpse maggots. Okay. I will be right back. All right. Uh, yes. Okay, so, ba ba ba. Have to figure out what we want here. We could put that question mark onto something else. I do want, you know, my combo with the corpse maggot, so almost, almost better to not do that. We do have two items, though, so I don't want to do that just for one item. I would almost be fine with. Yeah, it's just amoeba and corpse maggots. We could also put something on the pelt. Uh, do I want to put the question mark on the. No, let's put on the amoeba, just in case we do play it from hand. It'll be cheaper, and the stats are actually the same, so... Amoeba, but now it comes out for free. Also, it has a smiley face, so now it's happy to see us. I could totally see myself just playing a bunch of, like, Casey's mod, because I don't really have to commentate this. It's just... Boop, 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 click, 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 click. Fly ant, rabbit pelt, fly ant with bunny ears. Okay, porcupine and wolf cub. Okay, perfect. Uh, squirrel... No, not here. Here. And then rabbit, sack the rabbit to the flying ant. I'm almost playing as if I'm like still expecting to have someone telling me uh, what to do. Wolf pelt. Uh, Mole is going to be fine and we're just going to win. Easy. Okay. Uh, we could fill out our totem or if we could we don't have many much more in the way of sigils we could trade our stuff let's get a new card let's see if we can get the greatest card of all no field mice fecundity wait wasn't fecundity i think fecundity was fixed though for casey's mod where it only makes the copy once and not infinitely does not make a copy with fecundity uh, yes, all of our bugs. Oh, no, 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 no. All of our bugs. Easy enough. Another battle. Oh, gosh. Wait, they all have stank. Okay, opossum, squirrel, pelt, and 
That they both have flying too, so that isn't really gonna help so much. Let's do squirrel. Flying ant, so at least that won't hurt us. Unfortunately this oh what? Oh right, yeah, as soon as something else comes in. That happens. Um Yeah, don't hurt it at all. Okay, suck. Oh, wait, no, I could do this. I've just done that. Casey, did you? <gasps> you tampered with one of my sigils. You thought it too powerful, no doubt. But please, no more of that. Uh, Wait, what? What oh, happened? Oh, uh, Casey's mod has had a uh, mod to it that changed the fecundity sigil. Because whenever a copy be card bearing this sigil is played, a copy is created in your hand. But you could put that sigil on a creature that costs, say, one blood. You know... Play a squirrel, sack the squirrel, play out like say frog with fecundity, and then you get another frog with fecundity, so you can just keep sacking frog, sack frog to frog, sack frog to frog, make an infinite supply of bones, and just, you know, have the whole rest of your deck be creatures that only require bones, fill out the rest of the board, fill out your whole field with frogs, say, mm -hmm. which I have done, basically, from like, the first or second, yeah, I got the field mice, and then put the fecundity on the frog, and I just steamrolled the whole game. Uh, so there was a patch that changed fecundity, so you make one copy, but the copy does not have fecundity again. So mm. I'm about to lose this because I forgot I had my jar. So, so it goes. They have a bunch of stinking flyers, but I lost one life. Not all the lives. So I can keep going forward. Because, yeah, Fecundity was one of the most over... One of the most broken sigils in the game. Growth is nice. I'll, I'll take Mantis and see if I can put that on something. Or just buff the power of the Mantis. This is... Okay, it's health. Okay, uh... Could do amoeba. Could do field mice, but I don't particularly care for the field mice. Could do one of these. I almost want to just buff the raven again. Uh, buff the opossum? No, no. Don't necessarily buff that. Something wants to be buffed that if it dies, I don't really care. And I think I'm going to just buff the field mice, and if the field mice die, oh well. Okay. Make this a nice 2-6. Field my stand. Fakundi was tampered with anyway. So, and you may keep the bones, which might help. And now your elk have stinking. So, just that one elk, but it has bifurcated strike, but it is going to stink up the joint. Um... Squirrel. And I have to put that there. Or else this won't actually wind up working. That works out just fine. Let's see what is this. This is that. I can put that there. Perfect. Victory. Okay. Can I get another insect card? Yes. Another flying ant. I'm getting a lot of those. Wow. 
Can I boost power of my mantis go of my uh, mantis at some point here? Yes. Okay. In goes the mantis. Because uh, extra power is twice as useful here. If this succeeds, I basically have a one-shot card. Yes. Because if I put this out turn one and both of its hits can hit two, it will deal six damage, and I win. Now, health... I could put it on the amoeba and just go once, or I could work on sacrificing something else like a raven. Alright, this will be a 4-7, or it'll be gone. It's gone. That's good. That's good. You may keep the bones. Again. Gold. I can smell it. Okay, that's just gonna push. So, pack mule. Oh, pack mule doesn't have the extra pack of cards underneath. Now it's just sitting there. That's not what it normally is, but that is a wolf now. Okay, two regular old stinking flying ants. So that's gonna be an issue to deal with. That has what push? I'm going to squirrelify and flying antify. Unfortunately, only the one bone. I could do this, but I think I know. And then I'm going to wait on that for just a moment. Oh, okay. Now I've got the pack of cards. That hurt that, but I'd be fine. Take this and scrollify. Okay, so that is not going to be necessarily a good thing. And then that wolf is going to hit for three. We'll hit for one. Probably should have just done that on turn one. So that wolf is going to hit for a decent chunk. So that wolf is going to kill that beast. Oh, this works. And then that is going to wind up killing that immediately. That is would wind up going and killing that. That could kill, however, both of those as that walks up to try to deal with that. So I think I have to put it there and kill off both of those things. And then how much do I take? Boom, 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 boom. I think I'm fine. All right, overkill. Um, oh, look, I have a ring. So that, 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 and I need... I could do... No, because that would go there and take that. I need card. Rabbit pelt. So that's going to walk up in front of there and drop dead. But now it's go just going to regular die. A possum. Both of these are going to wind up dead. I don't have any more bone-related cards, do I? No. And then if I do that, then I'm dead. If I do it that way, I'm not dead. If I could play anything, can't sacrifice a boulder, so you're short. And I can't do any of that, so yeah, I'm just dead. Made it to the third boss, but that's all I could do. If I could play this... I could do something, but unfortunately, wolves were a bit too much, and I did not have the... I did not have quite what it needed to go. Sacrifice is made. Hey, look, it's my channel! Achievement unlocked. Rookie mistake. What do you oh. think of this Easter egg? It's my channel name. I thought your channel name was MRS Place. Yeah, that's a joke. Look, unlocks. And then you just try a new run. Alright, all regular battles are placed with totem battles is quite the thing. Boss battles are also totem battles, though. That is so dreadful. 
And then as you go through more and you unlock more and better stuff, you have to up the challenge rating more. Mm. You pack and hold one less item or don't start with hook or trapper's pelts cost more, but that's only like five. And this is like hold 20. And I it... have a bit more time. We can do a bit of uh, tutorial related stuff. So this is our opening deck. We can go back and this is the map. So the first thing that we do on the new map is go to the trader to use our two pelts to buy some cards. So Grizzly Bear looks all good and stuff, but it's three sacrifices for it. Four, six, and it does not have any sigils of its own. Black Goat, though, combos with the Grizzly Bear because this thing counts as three sacrifices. So we could squirrel into Goat into Grizzly. And we could hope to make that work. Or even squirrel into Goat into Moose Buck. And we could go and do something like that. Adder just has, you know, Death Touch. Cuckoo, Cuckoo, we did last time, and that actually worked out rather well. Having a lot of flyers did a lot of good. And what's that tentacle thing? Oh, this thing has uh, power equal to the number of cards in your hand. Why is it covered? I don't know. The rule book has stains on it. Okay, then. So I'm kind of thinking. Kind of. I love the expression on the grizzly. Rawr. You know what? Elk fawn and the cuckoo. I'll make good use of these. So we could move sigils around. Like, putting the skunk on the flying ant actually did a lot of good for us. And this leads. Or we could go this way and get two totems. So let's go and get two totems. Knowing the path ahead helps. So all cards of a certain type are going to get a sigil. So all of some type of card are going to give us an ant card. Which could work as a makeshift fecundity if we get the insect head totem piece up here. Because then those ants will also have the ability to give us an ant. Oh good, Cuckoo. So Porcupine, Coyote... That sigil means that it'll uh, pop up to block if an empty space would be attacked. So we could say have this elk go way over here. We could have that go over there. Let's put it here. The other one, bring us back up. Let that die. Fill up that little piece. Space. I should put it there. Let that go. Alright. Squirrel here. We could keep doing one per turn, but they're doing like... They'd also deal one per turn. We could do this. It's about time. I think we have to do it this way. Kill off that. We take one. Then we can grab a squirrel. You have me here. I surrender. Then we can just take that if we don't think we're going to get any excess points. But Because they are out of cards for this battle. We do it that way. We didn't get any access points. Should have just taken the olive branch. Uh, let's go for type and go for bug. Because, like, you know, bird cards generally have flying. Uh, elk cards can generally push. Wolf cards. There aren't many wolf cards. There's, like, the wolf, there's the alpha, and I think there's a cub that turns into a wolf. Bug. Yes! So, four bones for a 1-1 one, one doesn't seem that impressive, right? Mm -hmm. But what does the symbol do? 
Oh, that simple is where all the fun is. That symbol means that whenever it's whenever it dies, we get it we get it uh, we get to put it back in our hand. Ah. And that includes if it's sacrificed. I see. So we combine that with the sigil of when a creature dies, put it from your hand put this from your hand into play, put both sigils on the same creature, and then we have a thing that whenever it dies, it goes back to our hand and back onto the board. I assume you have, you're have you probably taking the bird. I'm thinking I'll take the bird, because I think I do have at least one bird. I'd rather get insect, but that wasn't a choice. 